Hey, so I'm going to be kind of going into the reverse engineering of the PMS 150C um, programming interface. This might not be di this might be very difficult. It might be very easy, but I suspect it's going to be quite obscure. And so let's just look at what we've got. So first things first, I have this SOIC 8. When I s talk about a pin, I'm going to be talking about the numbers. The numbers go round um, anti-clockwise. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now I've made some assumptions with this, so I'm going to assume that this is ground and this is power. I'm also going to assume that reset is still reset. So, and I'm also going to assume that reset is active low. Um, so it's resetting when it's at ground. So it's running when it's at power rail or something. High. Logic high. So that leaves us with six, uh, five pins to analyze for data and clocks and things like that, which could potentially be to do with programming. Now, why would you want to do this? Why would you not just use the existing programmer? It is pretty cheap, and I think you probably should use the existing programmer. But you might have a specific application where you simply want to program it in the, fi in the field or in the device itself, uh, or you don't have the ability to cart around this huge blue thing, um, which may well be the case. And it, it might be that you just want to get rid of a production step. Maybe your device has the required power rails and it would, all it would cost is a MOSFET or something um, to be able to program it when it's in the device itself. So, or, or even just programming it from test points. Maybe you want to do that. Let's probably just get started. What I have here is the analog discovery and I have the programmer and I'm basically just hooking up the analog pins of the programmer to the um, oscilloscope section of the analog discovery. So I'm going to be looking at the power pin and I'm going to look at the reset pin to make sure that things actually make some sense. We're going to need to actually sanity check this. So the yellow waveform, strangely enough, is the power supply. Now this might look a bit strange because it's got all these levels um, and these I suspect are just programming voltages. If you look at the far left over here, the section I've, that I, I am circling, you have these on-off, on-off, on-off moments. And I'm not really sure what's happening here. Um, it's probably entering some kind of initialization mode, um, although the power line is being turned off, so I'm not really sure. And reset is being thrown. But after, after that point, we have this long section, and I suspect this is where the real initialization happens, where it's getting ready to program the PROM. Um, it has to enter some kind of programming mode. This device can't just always be in programming mode. It uses the pins that would normally be I.O. for full programming. Um, so it probably has to enter that mode. Or it, it is also possible that it's always in that mode. It could be in that mode initially and because it's one time programmable the first time you program it it exits that mode forever so that could well be the case but because of the shape of this waveform I'm going to assume it's not I think there is an initialization section could be wrong but don't know the next section we get this high voltage section now this is about six and a half volts up here um, this is probably the section where the prom itself is being programmed um, and I suspect we have some kind of verification happening over here, programming again, and some more verification. What's going on with the reset line? Well, after each section, it appears that a reset takes place. So the so I'm, I'm thinking now the device must be stateful, meaning that after each stage in the programming, um, it must retain some state. It must know where it is up to. So so those states aren't lost between these resets um, because if they were you would have to start the programming process all over again and that would be not very useful so yeah what kinds of things do we need to look at here um, well from the start to the start of the programming is about 244 milliseconds we're going to be looking for the data at 244 milliseconds approximately um, it should be pretty obvious when it is because it, there should be a fair bit of data um, and the data to this, what I think is initialization section, is 68 milliseconds. So let's have a look at what I think uh, the clock pin is. Let's see if the clock pin resides inside 
the, when the reset pin is up or down. Now this will help us determine whether that really is a reset pin and whether that power pin is really the power pin. We don't know. Doesn't act, it's not actually guaranteed until, until the device is programmed that spec sheet, the data sheet, doesn't really come into play. Could burn some fuses um, and change the pins altogether. Let's have a look. Ooh, that does look like a clock line. Now, we're getting a lot of aliasing um, because the sample rate of the ADC on the analog discovery sucks. But we can zoom in, and I'm going to. I'm just adding some hold off so it doesn't re-trigger immediately. That's really annoying. Okay, so here we go. We're at 244 milliseconds, thereabouts. I'm having to reprogram it every time. Now, this is a one-time programmable thing. And because it takes a while to actually swap the device out, I'm not using the... I, I'm only analyzing the data that's sent when it's already programmed. The device doesn't seem to know the difference. It can't tell whether it's already programmed. So I'm only analyzing that data because otherwise it would take forever. Now, there are probably some differences. We've got the power and what I believe to be the data. So we should be able to look at a clock if we zoom into here. Now, annoyingly, this device isn't perfectly timed you'll notice that the relative timings change slightly. Um, and that does that has made this more difficult. Um, you'll notice, see right now, totally got a wrong section. Okay, so it does appear that it clocks when the power line's high, which is exactly expected. Um, and if we look at the reset pin, we should see basically the same thing. And we do, so that's great. Um, so, what now? Well, we've got the clock line. Um, now we need to find the data line. Now, I believe it to be the next pin. Um, it usually, they're usually right next to each other. And from previous probing around, it looks like the data line. So, let's go ahead and find that. Ooh. So, this is, this is the uh, 244 millisecond section. And this looks like data. So, with that assumption, I'm going to move the reset line over to the clock line. So, channel 1, the yellow one, will now be a clock. There we go. So, um, if I had some good probes, it probably wouldn't do this at all. Okay, so let's have a look. Well, if you look at this, let's look at this one data pulse and compare it to the clock. The clock goes up and down in that data pulse. Now, it's important. It doesn't always do that. You could just have a rising edge inside a data. Um, so that will change how we interpret the data. So I believe this section to represent 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. So I think that's sort of how the serial protocol is working here. And I don't know whether it's clocking in or... I don't know whether it's clocking in and out on the rising or falling edge, but because they're both inside every data, it probably doesn't matter so much. Does that make sense? I don't know. Now, there's something to notice. There is this section here. It's a slower clock rate. Don't know what's happening here. I have tried to figure it out. I have no idea. I can't get it to do anything in that section, so I don't know why it's clocking. So over here, it's still pulsing in the high frequency section. So no different than before. Okay, so I've thought about this since, and I've seen this a little bit before. Um, this could be um, the clock pulses required to actually process the command by the, um, by the PMS 150C. So it could take 12 clock pulses to process a word. Perhaps those pulses are required to shift it out of, the, out of one register into another. Who knows? But... I suspect those slow frequency pulses, they're lower frequency because that's um, how much time it needs to process things and they're also um, they're also required to actually process it. So I'm not really sure what that low frequency clock section does. So if we look at this, we do have these sections and um, they sort of seem to align like this. What could this be? Well, this could be the data direction. Um, the only reason I'd think that is because we have some clocks when it's high, and usually you wouldn't have clocks when it's high and you've got a chip select, if it is a chip select at all. <laughs> um, so data direction, clock when high makes a lot of sense, but um, 
then again, it could just be always clocking, and this whole region could be a big, a big chip select. Um, why would I think that? Well, it's very periodic. Um, if you look at it again, it's almost perfect. Keep zooming out. So I think, I think our best bet is some form of chip select on pin three. Okay, so I now have a rough idea of what the data, clock, power, ground, and recent pins are, but what about pin 2 and pin 7? It doesn't really seem like they have a purpose, so I'm about to investigate that. Pin 2 is one of our possibilities, and I've looked at this before, and it is a bit weird. It Now, this one doesn't isn't at all interesting when the device is being programmed. It's actually... it does nothing. Um, but when it's not being programmed, there are these constant pulses. What are they? So I've got this is the um, this is pin six now. It appears to have a delay after that initial pin two pulse. So pin this is pin five now. Pin five is basically synchronized with pin six. So it doesn't seem to do anything. Pin seven, what does that do? Well, it seems to be doing the same thing again. Are pins seven and six and five synchronized? Let's see. Maybe there's a timing. Now, I'm going to have to move these channels closer to figure it out. Oh, no, they're not. They're not in line. So, let's have a look. What's going on? Oh, They're one clock apart, each of them. So, what does that mean? The program is checking for um, open circuit. It's constantly doing that. If I, if I connect um, the ground of my logic analyzer to it, it beeps and tells me it won't work. And it also won't program. So, I know it is checking for open circuit and these checks these these strobing of every single pins in each pin individually will do that it will be able to tell if if it has a um a shorted pin because it won't be able to drive it high um so perhaps it's doing that but also perhaps it is doing some kind of id check something is embedded in this signal that allows the programmer to tell what chip it is perhaps it's that Perhaps it's the, the timing of it. Perhaps it's um, the order of the spins if the micro is the host of this process. I don't know. So I, I will just go through a few of the problems that I have with this, this device in decoding the protocol. Um, and there are a lot. This is a really weird protocol. Um, the voltage changes for everything. Um, so this is the chip select and the, uh, the clock line, and you'll notice that the voltage envelope is the same. So, but it's not constant. Um, around here, it's like two point something volts at max, and up here it goes up to six point five. We saw much earlier. So it is still quite mysterious what this protocol is doing. Um, there, there's so many things that are strange about this, and between programming runs, the, there is slight variation in the timing. Um, which makes it very difficult to correlate multiple, all, all the pins, all the, the data from each of the pins, without something like a five channel, um, a scope with a very deep, um, deep memory, um, because I would need to record the whole programming process to be able to decode it. Um, so if anyone has any ideas, or this looks familiar to you, um, leave it in the comments. Maybe it is some kind of rip off of an existing protocol. There were some ideas that it was from the old PIC prom programmers, but I'm not so sure. Um, but yeah, um, mystery to me. I couldn't use a logic analyzer because the threshold changes because the voltage changes with the um, programming stage. So during the the PROM programming stage is a higher voltage um, and it's also a voltage which is above the range of the logic analyzer. And if I use a voltage divider, which I did before, I actually lose the data from the previous samples um, because they're below the threshold. If it, is, if it is a chip select, it doesn't have an easily distinguishable word length. Um, it also has four programming voltages. Ground, two volts, four volts, five volts, seven and a half volts. No, six and a half volts too. Yeah, it's got tons of levels. Don't know what's going on. Um, ah, I hope this was interesting to someone. Either way, have a good day. See ya. Thank <laughs> you.